John! Well, I'm blowed. I thought it was you back at the hotel. What on earth are you doing here? Peter! Good heavens! Fancy meeting you! By the way, do you know Judy? Judy, meet Peter. Peter, Judy. Hi there. You know Liz, of course. Not half. Always said she married the wrong man. Judy, this is Liz, Peter Masters, dearly beloved. Hello. This is going to be fun. May we join you? Tell you the truth, I'm rather glad we've found you. Everyone seems to know everyone else, and, well, one doesn't like to butt in. What are you talking about? How long have you been here, then? Oh, just a couple of days. Lucky old you. We've nearly finished ours. By the way, which lot are you with? We aren't. We're on our own. Peter said he couldn't stand the idea of joining one of those package tours, so he booked our own holiday. Blimey, what it is to be rich and independent. Never in your life. Actually, we had one hell of a time getting here. We couldn't get through booking, so we had to hang around simply ages in Baal. And then there was a terrible muddle with the hotel rooms when we arrived. Poor yous. You both look as gloomy as sin. But never mind, come on, drink up. I take it you came in one of these package tours then. If it's not a rude question, what's it costing you? £37 odd for the fortnight. Crikey, but you're staying at the same hotel as us. And we reckon our basics for travel and hotel alone will be over 40 quid. Well, chum, you choose your way and we'll choose ours. It's a marvellous holiday. Even the train rides a giggle. You're getting to trim for all this sort of thing, by the way, in the bar car. Judy actually won a bottle of champers for her magnificent performance at the Shake. Crumb, I don't know where you'll find the energy. <laughs> oh, but you don't have to dance. You can stay in your own compartment. The couchettes are jolly comfortable. Anyway, talking of dancing, we're wasting valuable time. And this is my favourite tune. Liz, come on, let's show them how to do it. Fun. Peter, I think our luck's turning. Come on, John. Let's hear more about this wonderful pre-packed holiday of yours. To tell you the truth, it's exactly the same as last year. And I wouldn't have it any other way. We usually stay in bed till nine, then there's a mad scramble for the coffee and rolls to be ready for ski school at ten. One feels completely helpless on skis. A bit like Richard taking his first steps. Still, I suppose you've got to start somewhere. Oh, but you'll get the hang of it. The trouble is, you always feel like a beginner. John and I have wangled our way into the advanced class this year, and it's just like starting all over again. A bit expensive. All these lessons, I mean, isn't it? Now, ours are included in a ski pack. And of course, ski hire too, so it's obviously worth it. Well, I wish we'd known. I think you must have been mad fishing out all that, Lolly. The point about our trip, you see, is that we know almost exactly how much it's going to cost from start to finish. I think that's marvellous. Well, you can have all the lessons you want. Frankly, I've come here to Sunday, and if you want to find me, you'd better look on the hotel terrace. Oh, me too. But usually we do our sunbathing at one of the lift stations. Get exchange meal tickets and eat lunch up there. They always give you about a couple of hours before the afternoon session. Hmm, of course, the skiing's marvellous. But what do you do, say, after four? Seems such ages to dinner. Well, there's masses to do. There's a tea dance every day. And often we join the crowd in one of the cafes and warm up with some glue vine. What on earth is that? Mmm, it's sort of a mulled claret the locals make. Delicious, you must try it. Well, people can say what they like, but I've never had a holiday like it. What more do you want? Skiing, skating, tobogganing, all in a glorious haze of wine, women and song. Oh, and not to mention that gorgeous ski instructor. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, you can never trust them. Come on, Judy, my girl. I see it's time I dance with you again. What did you say the name of your tour people is? I don't think I did. It's Ski Plan, actually. Who's that? Ski Plan. Oh, Ski Plan. Hmm. I must remember that name. Liz, darling, up again. It's my turn now.
Ski plan, ski plan. Now there's a name to conjure with. It makes one think immediately of skiing. Skiing's such a marvelous way to meet people, don't you think? And out there on the mountain tops, Englishmen are really at their best. I don't know what it is. It perhaps it's those little woolly hats, or the tan, or those tight trousers. I expect it's because they've actually got something to do. They haven't got to think of anything to say. The whole thing is, you spot some beautiful, great, exotic-looking creature and fall down in a helpless feminine bundle and say, Oh, I've fallen down. Only in German, of course. And the delight of it is that it turns out to come from Virginia Water. Where do they all go for the rest of the year, I used to wonder. Well, I know now. They're in their bedrooms, limbering. Pre-ski exercises, you know. And if we don't want to be left behind in the great apres ski race, that's what we ought to do, too. These are the sort of exercises you need. First of all, you have to loosen up the spinal column. So you lie down. Put your arms back over your head. It feels so nice. And you raise your legs up and over your head so that your toes touch your fingertips. Not very difficult. Do it ten times. Now remember, you're not doing it purely for fun. Only because it loosens up the spine. And you can always have it tightened up when you come back. Then... Then there are the tummy muscles, which come in awfully useful in all sorts of ways. In all walks of life, really. You simply lie down. You needn't have got up again at all. You lie down with your arms at your sides. Then you raise your legs, keeping your feet together, about a foot off the ground, no higher. I'll keep them there for a bit while I count ten. One... Two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. You have to keep on doing it. It's very easy, really, I should say. Then there's one for the thighs, if you'll excuse the expression. Cycle upside down. On your back, I mean. You, you, you simply lie down and cycle. As if you were on one of those bicycling machines. Only upside down. The other way up. There's one exercise you simply must do. Everybody does it. You simply can't afford to be left out. It looks very distinguished, rather noble. You put your hands on your hips and go slowly up and down, bending your knees, like a very old pump. There is a special skiing version of this one. You have to hold out your hands in front of you as if you were sleepwalking, and then bend your knees, leaning slightly forward, and keeping your heels flat on the ground. That stretches things. And talking of stretching things, you ought to wear flat heels for a while, really. If you're a woman, that is. And if you're a man, well, I simply don't know what to suggest. Bound up and down the stairs for a bit. Don't use the lift. See, the whole point is... You don't want to find out after two days that you're all stiff, do you? Like some friends of mine who spent their honeymoon on skis. Or some of it. It was almost a disaster. They didn't take any lessons or do any pre-thing exercises. So they found it much more difficult than it really is, they said. Or oh, just one more exercise is all you need. 
unless you're some kind of health fiend or something, in which case, jolly good luck, I say. You're supposed to clutch your ankles with your hands and pull down to make your forehead touch your knees. I can't. And as a reward for all your labours, you'll be so live and beautiful, everyone will adore you. You'll be radiant in the confidence of your newfound beauty. You'll walk with your head held high. You might even end up with a title, I shouldn't wonder. And then, as you sit there on your throne, fingering your coronet and running gold through your bronzed fingers, you'll think to yourself, thanks. I owe it all to Ski Plan. <laughs>